gender ratio was uh, really stark then uh, i was one of two women in my class of 250ish uh, students uh, the year before had no women so it was very hit and miss i mean there'd be a couple of women uh, every so often and not very many at all overall uh, and so yeah it was extraordinarily stark uh how did it affect me uh you know in all the different ways that you could possibly imagine i mean the campus was not ready for us you know the women's hostel the girls hostel was i think just built the year before i got there largely empty um you know and uh, of course you know sitting in class was an experience you were one of you know two women in class frequently you were the only one uh, in class Uh, and it meant uh, that you know you did not have a circle of at, at least early in my uh, you know tenure at uh, IITK it really meant that you you know did not have a great circle of friends that you could work with do assignments with or learn from you were you know very much on your own um it would mean that in labs and uh, you know in workshops and things like that Uh, you wouldn't have lab partners or uh, people were reluctant to work with you uh, so you know so those were you know real disadvantages when it came to academics and you know trying to find your way uh, got a lot better as we all grew up and as we you know entered the department uh, got to know a lot more people and i would say that the last year certainly was you know much much better than the early years Uh, and you know and these do uh, require a lot of um, you know gutsiness on your own part a lot of motivation on your own part because you know you're very young right i was 16 years old when i joined iit uh, so navigating that as a young person uh, is is not easy right so it has big effects uh, and you know was this the reason for establishing we at ucl yeah in an indirect way absolutely Uh, of course the gender issues have changed quite a bit so they're not where i would want them to be still um so uh, at ucla this fall in 2021 fall we are going to be uh, if everybody who signed up shows up uh, we're going to be about 36% women in the freshman class uh, and that's a heck of a change all right and even 5 years ago that number was something like 22% in at UCLA so uh when i came into UCLA uh, i felt that we really ought to be aiming for gender parity engineering ought to be 50% right and so uh that's what that's why uh i set up we at UCLA uh, as a way of uh you know recruiting uh young women into engineering retaining young women in engineering you know we want them to be successful uh, and then creating a community that would be supportive of them when they graduated and went on to jobs or other careers and so yes i mean my undergraduate experience is certainly a part of uh, why i felt that this need was really necessary uh i think i created uh, you know the uh, it basically gave me uh, exposure to a world in which i could aspire to being an academician and a professional you know as i was saying when i first came to iit as a high schooler i had no idea you know what the world offered i had no idea that there was an academic world in which i could work uh, i had no idea that there was a startup world or a business world uh, i came in you know with no information at all and uh, my IIT key experience first uh, you know gave me exposure to the universe in which I could actually be a professional uh, I think what IIT key also did uh, was that as I was saying it gave me a vision of high excellence it, you know I began to understand uh, that there were brilliant people in the world I began to understand what uh, being very good at something actually meant um, and you know and it gave me uh, you know a vision to aspire to it, it gave me a standard to which i could work which i could work and i think that was uh, really really eye opening 
The other thing I think that happened at IITC is that I got some extraordinarily good teachers, right? I mean, uh, you know, I was really lucky. I had uh, people like Professor B. Srinivasan, Professor Yudhish Chaluria, uh, Professor Amitabh Ghosh, Ashok Malik. I mean, I, you know, I'm leaving out a lot of people, but I had so many extraordinarily good teachers, right? And that, uh, that was, again, uh, critical and sparking, you know, my own interests in these subjects. Uh, and, and in fact, their influence is formative. You know, I went into, you know, heat transfer and fluid mechanics because of the excellent teachers that I had at IIT. I mean, they, they were absolutely formative in picking these subjects. And so once I got into that particular stream, of course, that determined what I would be, the areas in which I would be doing research. Uh, the areas in which, uh, you know, uh, our company, Fluent Thing, is really a computational fluid dynamics company. And that stream of uh, work really started at IITK and the wonderful thing that these teachers uh, exposed me to when I was there. You know, I was really lucky that I had a chance to work, uh, you know, both in academia and in industry, really, uh, you know, in a, in, in a startup that actually did really well. Uh, and uh, they each come with a, a lot of opportunities. There's different kinds of learning that happens in, in both, but they are great experiences, right? So what's the kind of learning that I got uh, at Fluent? I mean, you know, when I joined Fluent, uh, I joined as, I think, the seventh employee or something like that, very early employee uh, at Fluent. And, you know, what I learned was that pedigree doesn't come for much. It doesn't matter that you're from, you know, big name school or big name advisor. In a startup, uh, what you do matters, what you know matters. And it matters a lot because, you know, you are trying to build a business. Uh, you're trying to convince people to use your product, in our case, uh, computational to a software product. And it had better be good, and you had better be good, and it has to work. You know, if it doesn't work, you know, we're going to buy your product. Uh, and so uh, things like pedigree really didn't matter. You know, what you delivered mattered. Uh, I also understood that life is much more than uh, publishing papers and, you know, uh, doing phen phenomenal research, all of which is great. Uh, but uh, other things matter, all right? So communication matters, you're being able to talk to your clients matter, business skills matter, financial skills matter, marketing skills matter. So uh, the full roundedness of all of these different kinds of skills uh, is really important in, in the business context. And uh, that was brought home to me in a big way in my time at Fluent. After, you know, and in the academic context, you know, many of these skills translate into academics as well. So I learned that, of course, you have to be phenomenal at research if you're going to be in academia. You have to be a good teacher. Uh, but a lot of academics also means selling your ideas to funding agencies, getting them to fund your work, making sure that people know about your work. So many of the skills that I learned at Fluent also uh, translated into uh, academia. Now, academia offers you a lot of freedom. You can do whatever you want, as long as you can support it and as long as you can build a research career around it. And I really enjoyed that a great deal. Now, lots of people think that you don't have freedom in industry. Uh, you know, I can't speak for all industry because industry is very broad. Uh, but I can tell you that I had uh, a lot of freedom in, uh, in fluent. Now, of course, I can't go do you know, astrophysics in a computational fluid dynamics company, uh, but within the realm of uh, fluid dynamics, within the realm of computation, uh, you know, I had uh, the ability to do whatever I wanted really, you know, so there was a lot of flexibility because this was a very creative company we were trying to build and uh, we were trying to explore new opportunities. And so I never felt constrained. I always felt that there was a lot of freedom for new ideas uh, in Influent as well. And, you know, and this is true in a lot of uh, Silicon Valley companies, for example, who will allow you to carve out time to pursue your own interests. Now, it is not uniformly true across industry, but it is true in many of the new places. 
there are you know very real losses of women from stem lots of leakage from the pipeline of women entering the workplace they don't last very long in the workplace and uh, a chunk of that has to do with uh, support for uh, women and families which uh, you know many countries in the world and uh, certainly in the US that support is very minimal and it's also true that uh, women carry most of the burden of work in the home and so uh, work life balance becomes an issue now you know this is not a fault of the women this is a fault of society in uh, first of all inequitable distribution of uh, work at home uh, and uh, the fault of society to not provide the infrastructure to allow this work to happen but the men do it over the women do it right so that is a pretty significant problem not just in stem but really across uh, the lives of working women this is really really important uh, so these are structural things that companies can do these are structural things that universities can do uh, to support women now uh, in stem uh, numbers continue to be a problem all right so uh, even though uh, you know my we, we are now doing really well uh, in terms of the percentage of women coming in uh, even with that uh, there are areas such as mechanical engineering such as electrical engineering such as computer science where the percentage of women is still extremely low uh, this really means that Uh, the work environment becomes difficult because the concerns of women women will not get heard um they don't get leadership roles uh, and uh, career advancement is tiny uh, and these are things that uh, both universities and companies must actively uh, uh, address now uh, you know for uh, students for women students Uh, again numbers matter all right because uh, you know i remember my days as a student and the difficulties with simply finding friends and partners to work with uh, you know study with being accepted as equal professionals uh, in these roles uh, this is a change of culture that has to happen uh, and cultural change won't happen by itself you've got to really make it happen so it is the responsibility of Uh, universities to make sure that these cultures are being transformed right and how do you do that you do that first of all by increasing the representation of women on your faculty those numbers have to go up you have uh, to have the showcasing of the success of women in these fields uh, you have to be able to move them into leadership roles in your administration and unless you do that uh, the culture is not going to change Right. So it's a long-term project, but it cannot happen unless there's actual commitment. Uh, when I uh, look at a student's application, the first thing I'm doing is looking to see, you know, whether they know the basics, right? And and you know that means great. I would like to see how you did in your basic math classes. I would like to see how you did in your basic. engineering classes in my particular case we transfer in fluid mechanics so you have to be sure that your core is really strong right and 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 absolutely looking for i'm looking for other things as well uh, i am looking for evidence of creativity all right so did you do projects did you do you know did you do research did you do other things that give me evidence of your Uh, interest in engineering and your creativity in engineering so anything that you can do to speak to that would be really important uh, and then i'm looking for evidence of your ability to communicate writing skill would be really really important uh, and so uh, make sure that your applications are well written your essays uh, statements of purpose are well written uh, and to make yourself stand out from everybody else that you know we get you know so many applications so uh you know you got to think about how your application actually stands out uh, above others it absolutely helps to have strong recommendation letters by which i don't mean generics i mean you know you get a lot of generic letters what i'd like to see is letters from people who know you well and who can speak specifically 
you know, to the things that you have done. So the more detail, the more knowledge of you uh, that is shown in the letters of recommendation, uh, that matters a great deal as well. What are my future plans? Uh, my future plans are, you know, exactly the kind of thing that I'm doing now. You know, I want to impact uh, education and research broadly in academia. Uh, so I want to open up access to uh, engineering uh, to a wide variety of people, women, people from underrepresented groups. Uh, and to make them successful in engineering. That's a big, important axis for me. Uh, I want uh, for my uh, school and for my faculty to push the boundaries of research and the creation of knowledge. And I want to make that possible for them. Uh, and I want my students to be beautifully taught, all right? I want them to be excited about uh, the classes that they're taking. I want them to be excited about the future of engineering and their lives as engineers. Uh, and so I want to push the boundaries of uh, pedagogy uh, and how to teach engineers in this changing environment with uh, you know, remote teaching, all the wonderful technology that's coming down, and to integrate that into creating uh, energetic, creative classrooms. Right? So that's my future. That's where I'm going to keep going.